Paul Bennett, welcome to Silver Ales. You are a, well, you are a, a famous uh, designer, a thinker in the field of design, uh, and you have grown a keen interest in Iceland after the uh, after the uh, the crash. I I just like to 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 start off by asking you to tell me a bit about yourself and and then uh, about design and 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 why you are here in Iceland. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, yes, I am a, a keen fan of Iceland at this point. Um, yeah, I'm a designer. I've been in the design business for over 20 years. I work for a company called IDEO. Um, I'm a creative director there. We're about 560 people globally. Um, I was invited to come here about a month ago to give a talk at a design conference. And it felt like a really interesting moment to come and say something about where design is going, about how we see design changing and the role of the designer changing. So going from being the designer just of things to being the, the, the one that is about answering more complex problems and thinking about things in a more systemic way. So rather than just come and talk about myself, I actually decided to come and talk about Iceland mm. and the role of design in sort of designing Iceland's future. So I came and had what was an unbelievably inspiring series of conversations with the Icelandic design community, with the Icelandic polit political community, with the Icelandic business community. And it feels like a very powerful moment, I think. There's a sort of crossroads going on with Iceland right now. Um, and I think design has an enormous role to play right now. Mm. So I'm very interested in seeing if we can help facilitate this conversation or this dialogue that seems to be going on between the design community, the political community, community and the business community in Iceland right now. Um, and so I decided to come back. We decided, I'm here with two colleagues, we decided to come back um, just of our own fruition to understand now post-election what this all means. And again, I've had a series of unbelievably interesting and inspiring conversations about things here. The design you're talking about, this is not sort of handicrafts, no. making, making chairs or pottery or... No, and I mean... It's, 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 you, have a, there's a, you have a sort of a rather a larger idea of design and we have a, you have a video here to, uh, to sort of clarify it. It's, uh, yeah, we have, a, we have a couple. I mean, we call it design thinking, which mm. is the process, about, the process through which a designer solves problems is equally applicable to the design of an object as it is to the design of a service, to the design of an experience, and to the design of a system. Mm. So design thinking to us is not about the lone genius toiling away in obscurity. It's about collaboration, it's about teamwork, it's about bringing everybody from the sort of edges into the center to work together, and it's about action. And I think right now, again, in Iceland, you don't need theory, mm. you need action. And I think design thinking is very much about how do we get something going now, how do we prototype ideas, how do we work together, how do we kind of work in a kind of multidisciplinary way to bring problems to sort of to fruition very quickly? Um, and th that's been an approach we've had for 20 years, but now it seems more relevant than ever in these kinds of conversations. So I think that it's about action. So the video that, y that you're referring to, and it's about, it's about the idea of being inspired by, mm. by other things. So the video that, that, I, that I've shared with you and I hope you're going to share is from India. Mm. Um, it's the Aravind Eye Hospital in India, and, and I'm very inspired by, I think we should all be very inspired by cultures that have been in recession for a very long time, like India, and yet are very, very entrepreneurial, which Indians mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a gentleman who created, and it sounds absurd when you see him say it, the McDonald's of eye care. And if you said that in a brainstorm, everybody would think you were completely insane and they would laugh at you, but he's created now the most powerful eye care system in the world mm. based on that. So I find some, actually find quite a large parallel between that kind of philosophy and how I'm finding Icelanders mm. think, which is there's nothing wrong with having a crazy idea. In fact, crazy ideas are good mm. right now, but it's the ability to actualize that. Mm. And he's built an entire system based on what seems on paper like a quite crazy idea. Let's, let's look at it. Please. Dr. Govinda Pavenkataswamy was 58 when he founded Aravind. When it first started, the hospital had 11 beds. Its mission was the eradication of needless blindness. Today, it is the largest and most productive eye care facility in the world. See, McDonald's concept is simple. 
they feel they can train people all over the world irrespective of different religions different culture different all those things to produce a product in the same way and deliver it in the same manner in hundreds of places he kept talking about McDonald's and hamburgers and none of it made any sense to us <laughs> He wanted to create a franchise, a, a, a mechanism of delivery of eye care with the efficiency of McDonald's. There are now five Aurobindai hospitals in South India. They are all self-sustaining and together they see over 1.4 million patients and perform over 200,000 sight restoring surgeries each year. two-thirds of its services are free. At Aravind, every patient who can pay covers costs for two who cannot. The paramedical team at Aravind forms the backbone of the system. These young women are recruited from villages around Madurai and are trained in refraction testing, ward and theater duty, counseling and housekeeping. Supposing I'm able to produce eye care techniques, methods, and all those in the same way, and make it available in every corner of the world. The problem of blindness is gone. So, yes, you're right. This, this is inspiring stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think, mm. I think the idea of, of being inspired globally is very important. I think there are really interesting ideas emerging all over the world. And at the moment, again, the, I think Iceland has felt in the past like it's very isolated. I actually think isolation is an old idea. I think technology is allowing us all to talk mm. quite out loud and be inspired by what's going on elsewhere. So I've been encouraging people here to sort of look outside and sort of go, OK, what's going on over here in other cultures? What can we learn from that? And what can we give to those? So it's a sort of reciprocity of learning that I think is quite important right now. We, we, we